Hi everyone, this is Mr. Miller and welcome to Enzyme Basics. So what did we learn from our enzyme lab with the liver and the hydrogen peroxide? One thing we learned, and it's important to know this, is that a catalyst is anything that speeds up a chemical reaction. Now there's two kinds of catalysts. One is an inorganic catalyst. Uh, an example of that might be something like this one right here. MnO2, manganese dioxide, was that black powder that you added to the peroxide. And you saw that that certainly speeded up the bubbling of the reaction. And there are other common catalysts that we use. The uh, precious metal platinum is found, for instance, in these catalytic converters. In your car, in your exhaust system, exhaust comes out of the engine, and there's a lot of unburned hydrocarbons from the gasoline still in there. That is air pollution if, it, if you let it go. But a catalytic converter contains a lot of platinum, some other metals, that helps to catalyze the breakdown of those uh, metals, or those hydrocarbons, and so that the exhaust that actually comes out the tailpipe is quite a bit cleaner for the environment. Yay, we like that. Organic molecules can also be catalysts, and any protein that is a catalyst is called an enzyme. So enzymes are defined as a protein that catalyzes or speeds up a chemical reaction. Now each enzyme has a specific substrate that it acts upon, so we call the enzymes specific to that substrate. And here's an example. Carbon dioxide is a waste product of our cells. And as you know, that has to get out of your lungs somehow, so it has to get in your bloodstream. And when it does, it'll react with water to make carbonic acid. Okay, now H2CO3 is the product of this reaction. The rate of this occurring, if you just have no enzyme involved, is about 0 0.01 molecules per second, which means that it takes about 100 seconds for one carbon dioxide to react with one water to make one molecule of carbonic acid. Now, if you have an enzyme involved, look how that rate jumps up. Now you can get 100,000 molecules of carbon dioxide reacting every second with an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. Let's go back to the lab that we did. Uh, we used an enzyme called peroxidase, which was found in the liver. In fact, peroxidase is found in all of your cells. As it turns out, it's a very important enzyme um, that catalyzes the following reaction. This chemical right here is called hydrogen peroxide, as we saw today. And anytime you see a chemical written on the left side of a chemical equation, they call it the reactant. Let's see if I can draw with my new pen. The reactant. And the reactant, if you'll notice here, is split apart into two molecules. We call this a decomposition reaction because hydrogen peroxide is decomposed to form these two products, which are called oxygen and, of course, water. So the reactant hydrogen peroxide is converted into oxygen and water. And when the enzyme is present, that happens very fast. One important thing to note, enzymes cannot make a reaction happen that would not re happen on their own. They simply speed up or catalyze that reaction a great deal. Now, this molecule is not only a reactant, but if an enzyme reacts on it, we call it a substrate. And a substrate that's reacted upon produces products. I should say the substrate is turned into products by the enzyme. And notice that peroxidase ends in ASE, and ASE is a common uh, suffix for most of the enzymes we have. And the enzyme itself is not used up. You learned that in the reaction. So let's take a look at how enzymes do catalyze reaction, and we're going to start with this picture here. The enzyme can shown, be shown very schematically in this model. And an enzyme is made of protein, of course, and it usually has a groove or a cleft in it. And they call this part of the enzyme the active site. And notice the substrate, or the molecule that will be changed, will fit just like a lock and key into the active site of the enzyme. This model shows a little bit more detail. This is 
um, an artist's rendering of what the atoms might look like in all the amino acids that make up the protein of the enzyme, and you can still make out this groove or active site. To understand how enzymes help chemical reactions to occur more quickly, let's look at a simple synthesis reaction. Okay, okay, these are two glucose molecules, say. These two simple sugars can combine to form a larger one if they just happen to bump in the right way. And as you know, molecules move around due to the kinetic molecular theory. And even though they've collided a bunch of times, they haven't hit at the right angle to form a bond but with an enzyme, shown in yellow, notice the two substrates fit together and a bond is made to stick them together. So it's called a synthesis reaction. We are synthesizing a bigger molecule from two smaller ones. And now you've got a product called a double sugar or a disaccharide. Notice the enzyme itself wasn't changed but the substrates both were turned into one product. Now let's look at specificity. Enzymes are specific, meaning they can only be used on one particular reaction. In this case, a double sugar needs to be digested or decomposed by being broken apart. There are two different enzymes here, only one of which can function for that reaction. I think it's pretty clear that the poor little green enzyme doesn't work. But, oh, the substrate is perfectly fitted to the yellow one. Yay! The bond can be broken between the two sugars, and now you've got one double sugar broken into two simple sugars. Here's another two sugars. Aha! Notice this sugar is a little bit different, and it fit nicely into the green enzyme. So, yay, the green enzyme got to work with a different substrate. Now, remember talking about monomers and polymers. Here's how a single enzyme can create a polymer. A bond is made between those two, first two monomers, and then the monomer chain, the, start, the growing polymer chain, begins to move, and the enzyme simply attaches more and more to it to make the polymer. That's how proteins are produced, and starches, and DNA molecules. Finally, Let's see how an enzyme can be destroyed permanently. And the shape of the enzyme's active site is important to bond the two substrates. It's a perfect fit. Everything's cool. However, watch what happens if we heat up the enzyme. Watch its active site. Oh, it just got really messed up. And now, unfortunately, oh, the molecules don't fit. And so there's no reaction going to happen. So we say that an enzyme is denatured, or its active site is permanently changed, and high heat, like boiling an enzyme, can do that, or adding acid or base to really change the pH. Okay, That was a nice little overview of the process here. So how does an enzyme work? Enzymes lower the activation energy needed to get the chemical reaction started. For example, the reactants here have so much energy, right about that level of energy. And it takes a little addition of energy, either through heat or something, to increase the energy available to break some bonds in the reactants, and then finally have them react to form products, which typically have less energy than the reactants did. So the amount of energy it takes to start this reaction is called activation energy. An enzyme by stressing bonds at the active site can actually lower the amount of activation energy needed and so therefore it takes less energy to kick the reaction into gear more reactants can turn to products easily. Let's take a look at the types of enzyme reactions. We already saw that hydrogen peroxide was decomposed. One larger substrate was broken down into two uh, smaller products decomposition reaction. The opposite of that, where you take two smaller substrates and put them together or bond them together to make a larger product, is a synthesis reaction, where you are synthesizing or producing a larger molecule.
Now, there are two models usually discussed with enzymes. The first one's called the lock and key model, and the second is the induced fit model. Let's check this out. The lock and key model explains the substrate, how it fits, and an easy way to draw an enzyme, maybe not easy with this pen, is to draw an enzyme like this. Let's say this is our enzyme. And this is our active site right here. What would a substrate look like if it was lock and key? Well, if I can draw it, it'll probably have a groove in it. Who knows what it looks like up here? But it'll have a groove like this triangle here that'll fit like a key right into a lock right there. So this would be our substrate and it would bind nicely to the enzyme. You have a worksheet called the lock and key theory of enzyme action. So go ahead and complete that right now and then continue the video. Now there's a second model called the induced fit model. And in this case, like before, an enzyme binds to its substrate at the active site. And that forms what's known as the enzyme substrate complex. But in this case, instead of being a perfect fit, the active site doesn't fit perfectly. And so the active site changes shape and kind of clamps down on the substrate. That stresses chemical bonds. That then lowers the amount of activation energy needed to make the bonds on the substrate break, therefore turning the substrate into products. So in essence, the induced fit model explains a little bit better how an enzyme can lower activation energy. So the enzyme can now let the products go, and it can find another substrate to bind to. Which model would this be? Lock and key or induced fit? You're right if you said lock and key. The substrate here, here fits perfectly into the active site of the enzyme and you can form what we call an enzyme substrate complex where the two are stuck together and then this bond is broken and the enzyme will be unchanged but it releases two products. So is this a synthesis or a decomposition reaction? Decomposition wins. This now is what we call the induced fit where here we have two substrates binding to the active site and the actual act of binding causes the active site to clamp down on the substrates. That stresses some chemical bonds within them, causing them, in this case, to be bonded together. And we make a single product. Notice the enzyme is returned to its original relaxed shape. So in this reaction, we can see a synthesis reaction where two substrates are turned into one product. This is an enzyme called hexokinase and a model that is built based on what we think it really looks like at an invisible atomic or molecular level. So hexokinase, we know it's an enzyme, A's, has a substrate called a hexose, any six carbon sugar. And notice how it can fit in this groove or active site. And notice what we see happening here. The active site actually clamps down on the substrate, stressing it. Which one would that be? The lock and key model or the induced fit? You're right. It's an induced fit. Notice the shape change in the active site. So let's recap. Enzymes are reusable. They can be reused to catalyze many reactions. They are specific to one type of substrate. And they catalyze two main types of reactions. A great example of decomposition happens in your stomach as proteins from, say, your hamburger are broken down into their amino acid monomers. And a synthesis reaction then occurs in all your cells where you build your protein polymers from all the amino acids that your cells have absorbed. So, self quiz. I want you to write this in your notebook. Thank you, and I hope this helped you.